But first, your team fixed this. Okay, offseason moves that I really like, either in the portal, in recruiting, or on the staff. The first one is University of Pittsburgh, Pat Narduzzi's Pittsburgh. They have a need at quarterback with Kenny Pickett going into the NFL draft. We'll talk a little bit about Kenny Pickett a little later on in the show. But Kenny Pickett emerged after two pretty doggone productive years at Pitt as a first-round quarterback talent. Okay, This year, I mean, he broke Dan Marino's single-season record for TDs in a season, passing TDs in a season, with 42, and it didn't look like they had the answer in the bowl game against Michigan State. Okay, But they go to the portal, and they get out. Keaton Slovis, he of late, formerly at USC. The reason I like this is Keaton Slovis was not just a starter at USC before, you know, losing the job to Jackson Dart and going into the portal and then the coaching change, but this is the guy that put JT Daniels on the bench, right? Now, JT Daniels blew out his ACL, started the season as a starter, and then Graham Harrell was like, Keaton Slovis, I need you to come up, right? Right, right, really, around the time that Matt Fink was still a name that USC fans had to know. And performed so well that in the next offseason, JT Daniels went into the transport portal, came out at Georgia, didn't start at Georgia. We'll talk about that in a little bit as it seems like that dude might be on the move yet again to his third team, a la Tate Martell. By the way, thing about Tate Martell, we'll talk about it here in a little bit later. But I think that Slovis has the goods to continue the kind of offensive onslaught that we saw from Pitt. Problem with that is you don't have Jordan Addison, and that's what I'm really terrified for Penny Pick, uh, Kenny Pickett about in the NFL is who's going to be your Jordan Addison? Who's going to be your Bolitnikoff Award winner? Who's going to be the dude that's catching everything? And you don't have Mark Whipple, who is the offensive coordinator. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So there are some things to overcome for Keaton Slovis, but I do like the move, and I think you have a guy that can continue to put you in a position to play in New Year's Six Bowl games. All right, next team we need to talk about is the USC Trojans. All right, this is a thing that I like, if for no other reason than the USC Trojans have become Oklahoma West. That's not even a joke. Like, all you got to do is look at the staff. All you got to do is look at the roster. Okay, so Lincoln Riley decides the day after losing the in-state rivalry game in Oklahoma that he no longer wants to be at Oklahoma. And he signed the contract. To be the next head coach at USC, I've talked about it. I've written about it. I will continue to talk about it and write about it. But from the USC standpoint, this is a baller move. This is a G move, right? You went and got one of the three to five best coaches in the sport today to lead your football program. And then he brought with him the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, the wide receiver coach at Oklahoma, the linebacker coach at Oklahoma, the cornerback coach at Oklahoma, and a guy that he had coached with at Oklahoma, Zach Hansen, who was the offensive line coach at Tulsa before becoming the tight ends coach at USC. Half of the staff at USC had worked or has worked for Lincoln Riley, right? Just to so let you know, it ain't the school that anybody's loyal to. It's the dude that is head coach that they're loyal to. And then Mario Williams comes out of the transfer portal to USC, which means you got to start with a wide receiving core that has Taj Washington, Kyle Ford, Gary Bryant Jr., and Mario Williams in it, to which the loudest joke in the room is, okay, but who's blocking for them? Look, first of all, most of y'all can't even tell me three of the five starters on last year's USC offensive line. So get out of here, all right? If, if you're a football nerd, I will hear this from you. But since you're not a football nerd, I'm not going to hear you dog an offensive line you can't even name, all right? Like, that's, that's really how I get to the bottom of whether or not you know what you're talking about. Can you tell me who the five guys that are supposed to be the projected starters are for your team? If you can, I will choose to listen to you dog an offensive line. Until then, chill out, man. It's January. USC's talented. But that's the thing. They've always been talented. And it looks like they're going to get even more talented. But, you know, being the best team in Los Angeles... Ain't been that hard here of late, even with the Rams being kind of good. It ain't that big a deal. And especially in college football, where the national championship conversation begins and ends with the thing in the Southeast. And that was the thing that Lincoln Riley was supposed to be coaching in 
the year after next, and he's running from. So he's got some stuff to prove here to say nothing of. Kyle Whittingham and Utah are still there. And as much as everybody keeps every single year trying to dog out Utah and talk about Utah ain't going to be there, Utah shows up in the Pac-12 championship, man, and then wins it. Runs Mario Cristobal to Miami is the way that, you know, Utah fans would like to see it. But quiet as it's kept, they're going to be good. Now, if only USC had a QB. <laughs> Look, it's either going to be the worst kept secret in the world if, when, how Caleb Williams decides to transfer to USC. Or he's going to shock us all and either stay at Oklahoma or go somewhere else. That said, Jackson Dart went into the transfer portal a week ago and has since taken visits to Oklahoma and Ole Miss, right? So you're stuck right now with Miller Moss. I don't think that's who Lincoln Riley's going to have as his week one starter come September, but we'll see. All right, at Ohio State, a thing that you did that I like, you overhauled the defensive staff. Like, Ryan Day is not playing with y'all. He's not playing with anybody. If it ain't working, he's going to change it up. And I love that. In addition to changing up the offensive line coach, because, I mean, not for nothing, but Justin Fry is inheriting what I think is a pretty doggone talented offensive line room. But you expected to have a better offensive line performance when you were starting basically four tackles and a center in 2021 and CJ Stroud benefited from that especially later in the year but it wasn't there when you needed it against Michigan right and that's the game that Ohio State fans are going to remember forever is the loss to Michigan and quite frankly the one that Michigan's going to remember forever because they hadn't won that game in like 10 years okay but for those that were paying attention to Buckeye football it was never the offensive line or the offense that anybody was ever worried about it was the defense in particular the defensive secondary and the linebacking court, right? But that defensive line wasn't up to the standard that we've used to, we're used to seeing from Larry Johnson Sr. and what they have set, right? This just hasn't. We thought Zach Harrison was going to come out and into the NFL draft this season. He's returning, which tells you a bunch, but they'll be loaded. He adds Jim Knowles, right? He has former secondary coach Cincinnati, right? Basically trading him with Kerry Cones. By the way, Kerry Cones being in Cincinnati, that's going to be awesome. That's going to be so much fun, Plus, especially with a dude that's got like 20 years coaching in the state, the high school football coach, and everybody wants to rally around. It just didn't go well when he was defensive coordinator last year. They turned over the play calling duties to Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes takes the job at Memphis. And then Jim Knowles, who finally got Oklahoma State to play the kind of defense that he thought they could in his 4-2-5, is now going to be that dude at Ohio State. And if he can get it flipped and turned around quick, fast, in a hurry – there's no reason to believe Ohio State can't win the Big Ten and then be in the college football playoff next year. That is the bet. But I love that Ryan Day went ahead and made that move. I also like the personnel they return. Like Denzel Burke is a dude. I think he's going to be great. I also love, you know, the best parts of their football team were freshmen and sophomores. Like, that's absurd. The most talented players on a top five team were freshmen and sophomores. C.J. Stroud, Travion Henderson, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Marvin Harrison Jr., Julian Fleming, Jack Sawyer, J.T. Tuimolau, Denzel Burke. We keep going here, right? The sky is limitless, right? Going in the stratosphere, headed toward the moon at Ohio State if they can get this defense sound. All right, a thing Alabama did that I absolutely like. They fixed this. Well, they recruit well, you know, 2021, set the record at the time. For the highest-ranked recruiting class of all time, Texas A&M has since gone and broken that this year. Wow. Talk about name, image, and likeness getting you right. But the other part about this, boss up. Okay? Bet on Saiyan Saban. Expect that man to be on his Vegeta once again after losing the national championship game, especially in the way that they lost it where they got their butts kicked in the fourth quarter primarily. Nah, Vegeta is about to be on it. And you know, Nick Saban and got a lot of Vegeta tendencies, you know, like they both short, they both ruthless. You know, my favorite Vegeta moment is Vegeta got a phone call talking about, hey, look, man, your whole planet, it's been annihilated. You're the only living person from that planet left. And he's like, cool, thanks for the call. Kept it moving. Yo, all right, 
When you got that sort of singular focus on going to beat the hell out of Kakarot, that's what it's going to be. And I think that's what Nick Saban's going to be on his revenge tour. Like he was following the 2019 season where they went undefeated in 2020. I just follow what the saying has to say. Okay. Michigan. Here's the thing that I like that you are doing. You're going to let J.J. Cook. Okay. You're going to let J.J. McCarthy be your guy. That is my hope and my prayer. Right. Because when J.J. McCarthy was on the field for Michigan, there's a bit more juice to your offense. I understand that Jim Harbaugh liked to run the football, and he got two tailbacks back there that are war emblem and affirmed, and he was going to run them. Okay? I get that. Had the Joe Moore Award winning offensive line. But I often thought during the Georgia game, you could have really used a lot of J.J. McCarthy just to try to get that defense going side to side in ways that are a little bit more unpredictable and make them cover more of the football field and, quite frankly, use another man to cover your quarterback because Kay McNamara just doesn't add that to your game. Plus, J.J. McCarthy's coming out of IMG where he was mostly running the offense, and you could see he wanted every opportunity that he was given, and when he got a chance to throw the ball down the field, it looked pretty. It looked gorgeous. Let J.J. McCarthy do that thing. Now, there's also the big elephant in the room, right, about – Jim Harbaugh, will he be the head coach at Michigan next year? He's getting plus 250 odds to be the Raiders head coach next year. It feels like it could fit. feels like it might be something he might enjoy doing. But for your sake and mine, I hope he stays in Michigan. I would like to see Jim Harbaugh and Ryan Day develop into the kind of thing that was Woody and Bo. It'd be fun, right? When Michigan and Ohio State are good, we all have a good time. Moving on to Oregon, here's the thing that you did, you fixed, that I like. You go get the next rising star head coach in the sport in Dan Lanning. You also added Bo Nix, which I put a question mark next to in my notes because the knock on last year's Oregon offense all had to do with Anthony Brown. When they ran the ball, they were brilliant. They were golden. C.J. Verdell could tell you all about beating up on Ohio State. When he went down, Travis Dye raised up, had 211 carries for 1,271 yards. He goes in the transfer portal. We'll see where he ends up. Oklahoma, you have a need. Maybe give him a phone call, but that might not be where he ends up. All right. Other part about this that I like is Bo Nix is not Anthony Brown, even as he feels like Anthony Brown 2.0 because – He's much more likely to be capable as a runner, but not necessarily capable as a passer. That said, he's got a W on Oregon, and so does the offensive coordinator at Kelly Dillashaw, or Dillingham, excuse me, not Dillashaw. I think those two working together is going to pay dividends. They know each other. They've been around each other. They understand what they're chasing, which is the Pac-12 championship to start. And Dan Lanning is coming in with all of this really good energy off of a national championship win as a defensive coordinator. If they can play defense, they can run the football, and they can occasionally throw for touchdowns, they ought to be good. But I think it's going to look a lot like it did last year to start. And whether or not Ducks fans are on board with that, that could lead you to 10 games. You could be 5-7. and seven. We don't know. It's first-year head coach. But I do like it, right? All right, moving on. Nebraska. You fixed a bunch, okay? I really like Nebraska. Nebraska added Casey Thompson, quarterback, Cuba Purdy, quarterback, Dakotas Crawford, with Dakota's name, and a wide receiver, offensive coordinator Mark Whipple, who's coming from Pitt, I mentioned him earlier with, uh, in relation to Kenny Pickett, and wide receiver coach Mickey Joseph, who rose to renown uh, nationally, right, after the 2019 season when his wide receiver core featured Jamar Chase, Terrace Marshall, and Justin Jefferson, okay? He brings that kind of recruiting prowess and that sort of coaching to Nebraska, Scott Frost and Nebraska going to be looking to put up 50. Like, on paper, you get the best out of Casey Thompson and what I expect to be a bridge year for perhaps a Chuba Purdy. You could be on to something. And last year, they were in every game they played. Like, it was a brutal year for Nebraska fans because they're looking at 3-8 and eight when they could have just as easily been 8-3, and three, right? It's, it was that sort of season for them. But Frost has taken no chances. He brought in two blue chip quarterbacks. He's going to have a quarterback derby. He's going to add more offensive firepower and weapons to this. And I am applauding Nebraska 
for continuing to put some faith and belief into Scott Frost and what he is trying to do at Lincoln and also saying, hey, look, it's taking a little bit longer than we would like it to, but we're much farther along with this guy than we probably would be if we started up all over again. Let's recognize who we are. Let's recognize that we got a coach that's trying to build. Let's recognize we got a coach that is also invested in what we're doing. I think Casey Thompson is due, right? I thought it was going well, really well at times for him last year at Texas. I also understand when you were transfers in, yeah, you, you decide to chunk up the deuce. I'm expecting Casey Thompson to be a talisman for that team. We'll see how that goes. All right. Arkansas. You did something else I like. You fixed this by playing Portal Combat Annihilation. Okay? Some of y'all saw that awful movie. There's never been a really good Mortal Kombat movie. The first Mortal Kombat movie is pretty great. But it's only great if you like campy Mortal Kombat stuff and if you are a Mortal Kombat fan like myself. But Arkansas has the ability to be Fire Liu Kang here. Okay? For those of y'all that play Mortal Kombat 11, you understand with the white tattoos and whatnot, talking about Chronica, get these hands because I'm an actual living god now. It could be like that at Arkansas. It could be like that, especially when you look at what they have. So... According to reports, Action Network, and others, Kendall Burrell has been offered the offensive coordinator job at Miami. Let's say for the sake of this segment that he doesn't take that job and he stays at Arkansas. So you have both your coordinators in place. You lose Traylon Burks, but you added Jaden Hazelwood, who I think can, is going to have a huge year at Arkansas. You also added LSU's Dwight McLaughlin and Alabama's Drew Sanders. Drew Sanders has the potential to be the kind of disruptive force that Will Anderson was last year and that or Dallas Tarrant Turner was, quite frankly, last year. He just wasn't good enough to start. Like, that's Alabama, as far as I'm concerned. I'm excited to see what he does in Barry Odom's defense, especially knowing that they got Jalen Catalong, who's going to be back there as a safety, organizing everything that they're doing. I love Sam Pittman. You know this. I like what they've been building to. They had their best season in a decade last year. I was early in on Arkansas, and then Coach Pittman is continuing to make me look good for believing in him and believing in what they're building at Fayetteville. Arkansas and Nebraska, for me, make the sport a lot more fun when they're good. Probably one of the reasons why I'm so high on them in 2022. But yeah, man, like, he wasn't actually joking about any of this when he was going, we're going to save a few spots for transfers. Because that's just where we are. And then, being able to pay your coordinators to stay. You'll remember, Barry Odom was a guy that was up for the Texas job before Steve Sarkeesian took it. Uh, and he was also a guy that was up for being his defense coordinator, right? Before Pete Kukowski did it. I'm just saying, when you got that sort of continuity, when you got that sort of talent, you got K.J. Jefferson returning, I expect Arkansas to be about its business, right, in 2022. And finally, Texas. The slogan for Texas is, don't stop believing. It's what I'm what I'm saying is it's a journey. You get it? Don't stop believing. Journey. Laugh at my cheesy joke. Also, you know, they're good. Or at least it's the thing about Texas. Kind of like USC on paper. They're really good. Like it's, it's I'm excited about what they could be. Quinn Ewers is the quarterback. B. John Robinson at tailback. Xavier Worthy at wide receiver. Jaleel Billingsley at tight end. On, like, if you gave me that on NCAA, I don't give a damn who the offensive line is. I'm going to cook you. I'm going to cook you. I, I am going to cook you like my grandmommy's gumbo. And grandma would put chicken feet in the gumbo. You know what I'm saying? All right? I'm about to clear your nostrils out with the kind of hot sauce that I'm going to be putting on this football because Quinn Ewers flipping it to Bijan, you don't want them problems. Jaleel Billingsley is such a dynamic athlete at tight end that Nick Saban had him returning kicks in the college football playoff the year they won the national championship, 2020. That's a tight end who was returning kicks. That was the reason I think Jamison Williams was brought in to begin with. I don't think they thought he would blossom into their number one and one of the best wide receivers in college football. I thought they saw a dude with legitimate 4-2 speed that could allow them to put Jaleel Billingsley in less special teams positions where he has to return kicks, right? Now, 
Cam Latou ends up being a better tight end prospect and a more uh, polished tight end than Jaleel Billingsley, who looked kind of out of sorts in the National Championship game, but also has all the talent in the world. If you can unlock him, Steve Sarkeesian, like you might have been able to unlock him in 2020 or even 2021 if you kept the job, the sky's the limit for you too. Like, I'm really excited about that offense in particular and what they're going to do. Uh, I, I don't care about the Oklahoma fandom part of this because I love watching good football, and I love watching talented football players play, even when they're cooking my team, right? Like, that's that's just how I'm wired. I'm here for the football. But that's 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 stout. Like, that's stout. And if you're a Texas fan, be excited. Like, Seriously. Be excited and expect to lead the Big 12 with a, with a Big 12 championship. You know, shut up the haters like myself, as you might say, right? Like, y'all ain't won one. Lord, it's been a minute. Maybe you want to change all that. And with this sort of core on your offense, you got the ability to put up 50. So go put up 50. Be about your business, too. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.